Hello, everybody. I'm Dwayne Dow with Dick Gonski, live from the Rosemont Horizon. And on behalf of Century Sports, we would like to welcome all of the Chicago viewers watching now on WFLD-TV and all of the South Bend and Notre Dame fans watching on WNDU-TV in South Bend, Indiana. Well, this certainly was a match made in heaven. Northwestern, with a great number of followers here at the Rosemont Horizon tonight, first appearance ever in a postseason college basketball tournament, taking on the fighting Irish of old Notre Dame. And there are a lot of Irish fans in the Rosemont Horizon tonight. What a battle it should be, Dick Gonski, and how wonderful it is to be with you on this uh, premier attraction in college basketball. Dwayne, it should be an outstanding matchup for a couple of reasons. Number one, Northwestern all year long has had depth problems. Rich Falk is starting the same five for the 29th consecutive game. He does not have a long bench. Consequently, Northwestern's probably going to have to play a lot of zone defense against Notre Dame. Now, that should help a young man named John Paxson, who's a first-team All-America, UPI, one of the great players in college basketball. You look at the Irish shooting around, Northwestern on the floor also. Another factor is the 30-second clock, which is in operation now, Dwayne, in this NIT tournament. Notre Dame has sat on leads throughout the season, and I mean in bits of four and five minutes a crack. They're not going to be able to do that in this tournament, and I think that's a break for Northwestern. I know you talked about the 30-second clock, Dick. There's something else that's new, I understand. What do we have here, my friend? using this, Dwayne. It's the, the old ABA basketball. Yeah. Dr. J had a couple of Look great games ball. with this, right? You know, I was talking to Kenny McReynolds, uh, one of the assistant coaches with DePaul University. They won here last night beating Minnesota 76-73, so the independents are alive. Kenny said that the turnover total by DePaul last night was its lowest of the year, and he thinks this had a lot to do with it. As you can see it. Very visible basketball. <laughs> Well, I think it's just great. And what an excitement. Uh, I was with Northwestern in the trip to Michigan. They lost a disheartening uh, game at Michigan on Saturday, and not many people felt the Wildcats would get into the tournament. But here they are invited, I suppose, as a Cinderella team. When you're 0-0, zero and zero, you're even with everybody, Dwayne. And quite honestly, I think the NIT people looked at Minnesota as a favorite coming into this tournament. They are gone. They'll be watching the rest of the postseason play on television. This is where it's at tonight. DePaul has won. Northwestern challenges Notre Dame tonight. And if you're thinking ahead just a little bit, there are some interesting matchups that might come out of tonight's game. Look at this crowd as we take a look at many of the fans from Northwestern in the purple and Notre Dame, of course, in their St. Patrick's green here at the Rosemont Horizon. There's still room here if you'd like to come out as we uh, do have some seats still available for this first round game in the NIT. Dick Gonski getting back to the matchup. Northwestern here in Chicago has won 14 games and lost only two. Notre Dame's only game here was a close loss to DePaul at the buzzer in this building, but the Irish are hot. They've won nine of their last 11. Notre Dame won 16 of its 19, Dwayne, in the ACC. Three games, two on the road, one on a neutral court. Convocation Center at South Bend. That's right. Northwestern has been tremendous in this city. Uh, they played their home games at Alumni Hall in DePaul for our viewers in South Bend uh, while McGaw Hall is being renovated for next year. By the way, Notre Dame will be playing Northwestern next year at McGaw. That should be an interesting date. And the two teams who have had a long football tradition will get together on the gridiron starting in 1990. And Dick, that's not that far away. <laughs> well, I don't want to think that far ahead. We've got 40 solid minutes of great college basketball coming up. Let's get to it. All right. Now we're going to come back for the starting lineups, ladies and gentlemen, and we have in store what should be an exciting sports attraction tonight. We'll be back after this mess. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Wayne Dow and Dick Gonski back at the Rosemont Horizon. And there you see what has to be described, I guess, Richard, as the ideal holiday night in March in Chicago. And certainly the NIT had to be thinking of uh, a matchup that would bring people out on a March evening. And there's going to be a good crowd here at the Horizon tonight. We have a couple of coaches here, a very interesting fellows. Digger Phelps, uh, who gets that nickname because his dad was an undertaker. That's right. Digger Phelps has had an excellent career at Notre Dame. He made the Final Four in the nation just five years ago. And he's really 
turn this Notre Dame team around from a losing record a year ago? I think he's done a great coaching job to get the team into postseason play this year. This is a young Notre Dame basketball team. Uh, Tim Kempton has been a starting center most of the year. He's a freshman. Dolan also, Price also. He's got Barlow. A very young basketball team here at Notre Dame. Rich Falk, on the other hand, in his first postseason coaching experience. Now, you know what it's like, Dwayne. I mean, you can go through the motions and do practice all you want, but when you get to the real thing, you wonder how guys are going to react. I think the first three or four minutes, the kids will feel it, then they'll settle down. As the game wears on, maybe Rich will feel it. But I think Rich Falk is going to enjoy coaching this postseason North Northwestern effort, the first ever in history, and it's a big, big game for the Cats because they honestly feel that as the Cinderella pick of the tournament, you got to get the first one under your belt, and after that, anything can happen. Dick, it's so exciting here for the our viewers at home. One side is all Northwestern. I don't know if Northwestern's ever had a, a following show itself in a given game like this tonight. Uh, tremendous outpouring of support for Northwestern. And on the other side, considering that the students are not in session now at Notre Dame, there's an excellent turnout on behalf of Notre Dame. And these fans are on their feet already. Well, they're ready. We're getting a slight delay in the tip off uh, as the club comes out. Here come the Wildcats onto the floor. We had some basket adjustments to make. The Irish were dunking here about 7.30, and one of them bent the rim. I think it was Tim Andre. And so they had to reset the basket to our right, and so then they had to level it off, make sure it was at 10 feet exactly, and then work on the other hoop. That's why we're a little bit late getting off on the tip-off. And as you say, I don't know if it's the uh, holiday atmosphere, if it's uh, Aaron Gobra or what here on St. Patrick's Day. This crowd is really alive for this game tonight. Even though they haven't played in football or basketball recently, these are natural rivals. You've got two good academic institutions. They really both are Chicago teams, and it's only natural that the rivalry is going to get going again. And how and how fitting it is that in a postseason collegiate basketball tournament game, the Wildcats and the Irish can start playing each other again. Honest to goodness, Dwayne, I, I am really excited about this game because of the rivalry that you talk about. Northwestern played Notre Dame uh, kind of on a yearly basis, once in Chicago and then once at McGaw. That broke off for a while. I believe the first match was in the 1920s. Northwestern's last win over the Irish came in the 1960-61 season. So it's been over 20 years since the Wildcats have defeated Notre Dame. You know that Rich Falk and his Wildcats would love to knock off the Fighting Irish tonight. Dick, uh, Northwestern basically is a team that has gone with six players all season long. The same five players have started the entire year. Notre Dame, on the other hand, goes with about nine players. Could depth be a factor in the outcome, in your opinion? I think it can if Northwestern gets in serious foul trouble. We saw that during the Big Ten season, Dwayne, covering Northwestern. Right. When uh, Andre Good or Jim Stack or Art Aaron got in trouble, Rich really doesn't have much to go to off of that bench. And those kids that are coming off are kids like Ryan Pitts and uh, Richardson. Clarence Richardson young players so there's really not a lot of experience coming off the bench Notre Dame on the other hand plays 9 10 11 players a night that's the way diggers always done it as you look at the officials all right the officials are from left to right Ed Papagowski Richard Slumkowski definitely not Irishman there and James Burr they are all out of the state of New York and the National Invitation Tournament Committee assigned those gentlemen to tonight's game of course the NIT goes way way back DePaul, as you look at the crowd here at the Rosemont Horizon tonight, DePaul won it with Ray Meyer, the coach, a young Ray Meyer then in the year 1945. Dick, I was five years old, and I don't remember much about it. I wasn't around. The Blue Demons have been in it since. Notre Dame has never won a postseason basketball tournament. Now, the Irish were runner-up to Virginia Tech in 1973. And uh, Northwestern, of course, just happy to be here. One thing about the clock. 30-second clock in effect in this tournament. As we said in the tease, Notre Dame has utilized the uh, ability to sit on the lead and, and burn some time off the clock. In this 30-second clock routine, they're not going to be able to do that. But another angle to that, Dwayne, is that 
Digger Phelps has had players at Notre Dame under wraps for quite a few years. Slow down tempo, let's not race a, ho a racehorse basketball up and down the floor. This may be the opportunity with a shot clock for some of the Notre Dame talent to play and show its ability out on the floor in a non slow down situation. And I think that's going to be very interesting. All right, in the middle of the floor, you see Willie the Wildcat, the Northwestern mascot, embracing the Notre Dame mascot. There, the Irish bench, and let's go to public address announcer Ed Ryan in his 38th year as Northwestern University public address announcer. Starting it forward, a senior, 6'6", six, six, number 34, Bill Varner. Billy Varner coming off an ankle sprain, and he will be starting tonight. At the other forward, a freshman, 6'8", number 42, Jim Dolan. This is Jim Dolan, one of the freshmen that we talked about in the open. Fine. At center, a senior, 6'10", number 53, Tim Andre. Kind of a of Tim Kempton and because Andre had a great game against Northern four, Iowa. John Paxson. Here's the All-American UPI first team John Paxson. Big and story in Sports Junior, Illustrated today four, about him and, him and his brother. Tom Sluby. Tommy Sluby playing at a guard. He's a uh, junior averaging five catch. points a ball game. Now Northwestern. Starting it forward a senior. Oak for a 6'7", 25 Jim Stack. Here's the heart and soul of Northwestern. Fifth-year senior Jim Stack, second-leading scorer in the school's history. St. Ignatius, Chicago, 6'7", 24, Art Aaron. A guy that Rich will count on next year. Art Aaron will be back. He shaved his head. You notice that? Yes, I do. 6'10", 44, Andre Good. Andre Good, who's averaged almost 10 a game. He'll be back next year. Senior, St. Ignatius, Chicago, 6'5". 33, Gaddis Rathel. Gaddis Rathel out of the Catholic League in Chicago. And the other guard is senior, Westinghouse. 6'2", number three, Michael Jenkins. Frank Lolino product, ball. Michael Jenkins out of Westinghouse, the senior captain. The coaches are Rich Falk and Digger Phelps. You can feel the atmosphere in this building as you look at the officials. Both sides really want this game badly. You can talk about being a second line tournament, if you will. Some people think it is. But when you get to game time and tip off time, when you're on the floor, when the, all the chips are down, this is a big basketball game. Yes, Dick Gonski, there, there are a lot of good basketball teams in the United States, and these are two of them as we take a look at Rich Falk and his Wildcats. Rich Falk coached Northwestern to its first winning season in basketball since 1968 69. You have to go back to when Larry Glass was coaching Northwestern in the 68-69 campaign. And there you see, flashing before you there, that red, white, and blue ball, the official ball of the NIT. Dwayne talking to Rich before the game, he told me, as you look at Digger, Northwestern will be pressing three-quarter court after field goals and free throws. I'll get into that a little bit more. It revolves around the 30-second shot clock. Watch for the press by Northwestern. The Irish in their dark blue uniforms. Northwestern, of course, in their home whites. And the tip goes to Notre Dame. And here is first-team All-American John Paxson with the ball. 6'2", senior out of Dayton, expected to go in the first round of the pro draft. He gives it to Bill Barner, who's just coming back from an ankle injury. Barner trying to drive. On him is Michael Jenkins. North, both of these teams known for their defense. Northwestern only gives up 60 points a game. Broken up by Art Aaron, and the ball goes out of bounds off Northwestern. And at midcourt, it's the Irish getting possession. And the Northwestern Wildcats in a very effective zone defense on that first possession by Notre Dame. Barner gets it into Paxson. Paxson hasn't scored as much this year because Notre Dame has gone to more of a team game. Paxson tries to get it inside. The ball is on the floor, and Paxson picks it up outside again. In the zone, Art Aaron playing out on the point. He'll reach in and give uh, Paxson some problems. Dolan lost it. Good picked it up. Long down court pass from Jenkins to Rafael. Jenkins faking on Sluby, and Jenkins scores the first bucket of the game. Michael Jenkins for Northwestern. Art Aaron. Now here's the press. Here's three-quarter pressure by Northwestern. They just want to make Notre Dame burn some time in bringing the ball up the floor against that 30-second clock. The foul there is on Andre Good. 
He reached in on Dolan. And of course, we have the first common foul of the game. Now, each team allowed 16 fouls before anybody goes to the free throw line on anything other than a player control foul or a shooting foul or a technical foul. Paxson with it outside, giving to Dolan back to Paxson. Over the corner to Barners. Jim Stack right on him. Long cross court pass to Sluby and inside Dolan missing. But Barner underneath, he couldn't get the angle, and it's Gaddis to fell. Giving it over to Michael Jenkins at Northwestern leading 2-0 on the attack. Aaron Ocarathel to Jenkins to stack. Now Michael Jenkins slows it down for Northwestern early in the game. Northwestern and White leading Notre Dame 2-0. Jenkins missing. Rebound to Aaron, and we have a whistle stopping play. Art Aaron pushed off from behind, and that's going to be a foul on Art, his first. Notre Dame in a matchup zone right now with uh, John Paxson kind of floating around. Very interesting defensive concept by Northwestern with Art Aaron out here with those long arms trying to bother Paxson on the shot. And they get it inside as 22, Jim Dolan, 6'8", freshman, puts it in. Dolan's not known for his scoring, but Notre Dame worked it well there. Now down to Stack. Stack shooting and hitting. Northwestern straight star, Jim Stack, out of the Chicago Catholic League. He played at St. Lawrence High School, and the Wildcats lead the Irish. Have you just joined us? This is a college game, but there's a 30-second clock. The ball has to be shot within 30 seconds. But once a shot is taken, the clock is reset, no matter which team gets the ball. Barner driving. No good. Paxton. Barner. Barner ties the game. Great three digger Phelps. He lost in this building on a buzzer beater by Kenny Patterson of DePaul. And Northwestern throws it away as John Paxton comes up with it. First team All-American, UPI. Paxton hits. Northwestern with it. Notre Dame with his first lead at six to four. There you see him, the first teamer, outstanding player for the Irish for four years. Art Aaron, we mentioned earlier, Art shaved his head after the regular season. Nobody really knows why he did it. Now stack shooting, no good. Hit by Rafael. Gaddis Rafael on the board, tying the game at six. That was an unbelievable left-handed tip by Rafael, who came from his guard position to make that tip. What great emotion. Everyone's eyes fastened on the hardwood of the Rosemont Horizon tonight. With the Notre Dame fans on one side and the Northwestern fans on the other. Tom Sluby with it. He played forward earlier when Barner was hurt. Now Barner's come outside behind the free throw circle to Dolan. Dolan to Andre. And Andre got the easy basket as Notre Dame leads 8%. No foul on the play. Looked like there might have been an offensive foul after the shot by Andre, but no call. Be interesting to see how long Digger keeps Kempton on the bench, his former starting center. Now Northwestern getting some pressure from Notre Dame at around midcourt. Michael Jenkins, number three in white, has had an excellent year for the Wildcats. Jim Stack shooting and hitting. Eight to eight five. Jim Stack working very, very hard against Dolan, the freshman. That's a fifth-year senior against the freshman. 8-8 tie. It's been all everyone could expect so far. They work the ball to Paxson. And now driving from the right. It is Sluby hitting from the top of the key. And the Irish regain the lead at 10-8. And Dwayne, all five Notre Dame starters are on the board. Good balance in the Notre Dame attack so far. Northwestern with Michael Jenkins. Brightly lit floor here at the Rosemont in Chicago. Andre Good back outside to Art Aaron. Up and no good. Ball in the air. The rebound taken down by Sluby. Notre Dame trying to get the game's biggest lead. Barner. Aaron is right on it. Over it goes to Sluby, but he couldn't control it. Now just at the free throw line. Dolan got it back outside. Barner shooting. No good. Rebound by Rafael. And Rafael holds up. This young man, number 33 in white, Gattis Rafael, played at St. Ignatius High School in the Chicago Catholic League. And we have a turnover. We have a turnover. Northwestern gives it over to Notre Dame. Jim Stack complaining he wanted a foul on the play. He's working on the freshman. So, with a timeout, early in the game, Notre Dame leads Northwestern 10-8. We'll be back after this message.
right back to the action as Notre Dame leads Northwestern in round one of the National Invitation Tournament here at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Actually in Rosemont. Village at 4100 in the northwest suburbs, but just a couple of miles from the city limits of Chicago as we see John Paxson, native of Dayton, Ohio. First team All-American for Notre Dame. This is that shot. And the Irish with Andre trying to follow, but a, an offensive foul on Notre Dame. Nick, you had some early statistics. Field goal shooting uh, for Northwestern, four out of seven. Notre Dame, five out of nine. Rebounds about even. Turnovers, two to one, Northwestern. 10 to 8, the Irish lead, and now Northwestern in this possession tries to take the lead. Great number of, well, this is what college sports is all about. Great number of backers for both of these teams in this building, the Rosemont Horizon. As Rafael gets it into Andre Good, and Stack is alone. Great pass by Andre Good. He saw that Stack was open. The defense came out to meet the shooter, and Stack got the easy layup. We have just under 14 minutes to play in the first half, and it's a 10 to 10 tie as Dolan gets it to Sluby over to Paxson. Kempton has reported into the scorer's table. He'll be coming in a minute for Notre Dame. Sluby working on Aaron. Back out to Varner, out of Paxson. Paxson working to Dolan. They move the ball well, and Andre went up and came down. And they give the ball to the Irish, to the uh, Wildcats. Andre leaves, and Tim Kempton, the six foot nine inch freshman from Bayville, New York, comes in to replace him. So up comes Northwestern into the front court. Gaddis Rathel. Rathel giving a stack. Stack trying to feed it into Art Aaron, and the ball is stolen. And Kempton comes up with it, and he gets it out to Sluby. Not a Paxson. Irish in their bright road uniforms, the dark blue with the gold numerals and trim. We're tied 10-10 early. Outside shot is good. And Dolan, who's not known for his shooting ability, looked like a dead eye there as Northwestern leads it 12-10. So far, the Irish are kind of staying on the perimeter against the Northwestern zone defense, and I think that's uh, got to be a, an asset for the Wildcats as we take a look at the, that defense. The extended zone defense that they're using, very effective. Rafael tried to beat Aaron on the cut, but the ball never got there, and Paxson brings it up. And underneath now, Sluby backing away. Stockily built fellow gives it into Kempton. He's double teamed. The big redhead out to Paxson, and Paxson hits. And Notre Dame is looking good. The longest lead of the game for either team as the Irish lead it by the score you see. Wayne, Northwestern is hurting itself with those turnovers. They, they have possession, but they're turning the ball over uh, kind of anxious, I guess, in these first six minutes. Down through the years, Notre Dame has been like the Yankees. You don't give them any break, right? That's right. They'll kill you. And now we have a timeout. No, it's on Andre Good. Andre Good with the foul. I see. Offensive foul on Northwestern. And you've been talking about the turnovers, Dick. And that's one of the big reasons Notre Dame's ahead right now by four points. Two fouls on Andre Good. And, and Wayne, that's something that Notre Dame's going to really try to take advantage of. And Rich Falk isn't going to let him. Good is already out of the game. Paul Schultz is in. Smart move by Rich Falk. Up come... The Irish, and now in the game is Dan Duff out of Lincoln, Illinois. He's a sophomore, six feet. He's wearing number 22 on the right of your screen. Ball goes out of bounds, and you see Coach Rich Falk yelling at his captain, Michael Jenkins, and trying to get the Wildcats moving here. Notre Dame has, has uh, had all of the play lately. Duff with it. Notre Dame leading by fours. Duff feeds inside, and we have another whistle stopping play, and this foul is on Jim Stack. That's the first foul on Jim Stack. And that is the 13th foul on Northwestern here in the first half. Notre Dame has won. Dan Duff, uh, as you mentioned from Lincoln, not really a threat to shoot the basketball, but he's a great playmaker and a deadly free throw shooter. Duff moving, gives it into Barner. And a Northwestern player got his hand on the ball. But Barner gives Notre Dame a lead of 16 to 10. And now the Irish have broken this thing open a little bit here with 11.44 to play in the first half. Jenkins on the drive, ran into Barner. Back to Aaron, who travels. Can't say enough about the turnover situation, and Rich Falk feels it. He's going to get his club on the bench right now. So, with the score, Notre Dame 16, Northwestern 10. 
We'll be back after this message. As you see, Notre Dame is leading Northwestern in round one of the National Invitation Tournament, 16 to 10. For a team to get to New York, that team has to win three games in other areas of the country before making the semifinals in New York as Paxson shoots and misses. Tip up by Dolan, no good. And a foul is on Jim Stack. Make it Dolan. Dolan committed the foul. Good boxing out there by the, uh, the Northwestern front line. And so uh, the turnover gives it back to Northwestern. They really need possession here and a solid shot. They've got to run a good, solid play and get on the board again. Notre Dame's run off six points in a row. 16 to 10 in favor of Notre Dame. And the Wildcats trying to break the drought. Stack with a big man on him. Kept it. Number 41 of Christian. Jenkins trying to shoot. Kempton's hand at his face. Barner committed the foul. Let's see if they call that a shooting foul or if he was dishing off to one of his teammates. They're calling it a pass-off, which is the way it looked to me. Notre Dame's second team foul of the first half. Northwestern has four. Make it three fouls now for the Irish. As each team is allowed six, as we mentioned. Northwestern on the throw-in and badly need of a basket. Aaron with it. Looking. Gets it out to Rathel. In the stack. Stack is sandwiched. Loses the ball. And the physical Notre Dame team comes up with it. Duff driving. Over to Paxton. Who hits? I think he's worried about the defense. He thought that Stack was fouled in that triple team by Notre Dame. No call from the officials. Notre Dame has scored eight points in a row on Northwestern. As Jenkins going to the right sideline, giving to Rafael. Inside now, Stack turning and missing. And the rebound to Notre Dame as the Irish have a chance to go on to a 10-point lead. Duff with it. Motioning Paxton. Now he gives it over the left corner to Varner. Rebound by Stack. Here's rebound. Here's Stack all the way for Northwestern. Out to Rafael to Jenkins. Jenkins getting up in the air and feeds Aaron. And Aaron misses. Notre Dame. Northwestern can't buy a basket right now as Notre Dame is back up the floor in the person of Duff. Oh, Dolan all alone. Missing. Rebound by Aaron. Three on two. Defensively, Dwayne, uh, Northwestern really has a confused state going on. As you look at the fast break, Art Aaron in the middle to Jenkins. Jenkins with a nice pump move inside, draws the foul, the basket counts. That wingman has been left wide open on the Notre Dame offense the last three times down the floor, and Falk is really upset at his defense right now. He's arguing with his own coaches about it as we take a look at Jenkins shooting for the three-point play. Michael Jenkins, senior out of Westinghouse High School in Chicago Public League, and he converts the free throw to make it a three-point play. Still Notre Dame with the ball leads by five. Now here's Rafael exerting a little bit of pressure in the Notre Dame backcourt as Paxton brings it up. We've got a stream of substitutes ready to come into the game for Notre Dame. Paxton shooting, air ball, but underneath, got the roll on that one. He'll try to get the three-point play for Notre Dame to answer Jenkins' three-point play. Here comes a host of substitutes for Notre Dame as Digger Phelps kind of playing a platoon system right now. Andre is in. Barlow is in. Also Buchanan. You know, these substitutions have a reason, and I think one of the reasons is the shot clock. A foul on Andre again, Jim Andre is second. But I think Digger Phelps and also Rich Falk are thinking for the second half. In the last four minutes of the game, the 30-second clock will be shut off. That's when you can see a stall, and that's when players are going to need energy. That's why they're going to be rested here in the first half. All right, Jenkins talking to his coach, and now he brings it up. That last foul, giving Notre Dame a free throw, which the Irish missed, was on Jenkins. Stack shooting, and again, the Ohio Cats can't hit, but Aaron got it back. And Aaron misses. Paul Schultz, number 
of 23 and White is in the game for Northwestern. And now virtually a new cast in the game. With the ball is Joe Buchanan out of Seattle, Washington. He's a freshman for Notre Dame. Now he gives it over to Joe Price, another freshman from Marion, Indiana. And now over to Buchanan again. Price shooting from the corner, in and out. Rebound by Notre Dame. Rucker shooting, no good. Rebound by Aaron. Cecil Rucker got that shot away. He's a, he's a veteran for the Irish out of Washington, D.C. Jenkins over to Aaron. Underneath, Schultz on Rucker, and Schultz plays it in. And now it is Notre Dame 20, Northwestern 15. Eight minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half. Big hoop for Northwestern and for Schultz off the bench. They've got to get Art Aaron in this ball game offensively. He is scoreless. Aaron averages 14 a game. All right, Notre Dame with Buchanan on the left-hander. Yes. Notre Dame leading by seven at 22 to 15. Northwestern in Chicago this season, 14 wins and two losses, but they have yet to play a game on this floor. Rafael shooting, no good. Rebound by Stack. So Stack is called on the foul. And we have a timeout on the floor. With a score, Notre Dame 22, Northwestern 15. We'll be back after this message. Already in the game, Nick Gonski, Notre Dame has used 11 players. They've used their starters, Barner, Dolan, Andre, Paxton, and Sluby. And they've used six substitutes, Buchanan, Duff, Price, Kempton, Rucker, and Barlow. And with that, Notre Dame has just two turnovers. You might expect more. Northwestern with six turnovers, and that's the difference in the ball game right now. All right. Up come the Irish with the person of Joe Buchanan. Freshman out of Seattle, Washington. Veteran Michael Jenkins on Buchanan. Now Price driving. Inside, Tim Andre. And he misses. The tip no good. And the Wildcats and the person of the little man, Michael Jenkins, come away. Now it goes to Aaron. Back outside to Rafael. Jenkins. Outside. His Northwestern team trails by seven. Rafael gives it over to Aaron. Notre Dame 22, Northwestern 15. Seven minutes and nine seconds to play in the first half. Good with it. Outside, Jenkins with a shot. No good. Bad shooting by Northwestern. Here. Wayne, that's not the shot Rich Falk wants from this offense. They've got to get in closer than that. Falk is in the air, and Rafael comes down with it. Three on one. And Schultz has a Oh, that's a oh. defensive play by Price. The freshman, Price, Joe Price from Marion, Indiana, with the block. He is 6'5", and he's working against Jenkins, the guard. Jenkins is 6'2", and there you see him high off his feet. Great block by Jenkins, uh, by uh, uh, the freshman Price, and it's out of bounds to Northwestern. Well, Northwestern seemingly battling for its life right now. Wildcat players have a look at desperation at this particular time. They've got to get a ball or two that falls in for them. They're just not getting the roll. There's one by Art Aaron. And they've got to get him on the board now. Get him involved in this offense. Northwestern trails Notre Dame 22 to 17. The Irish bring it up. Remember now, one thing that would go against either team running away is that 30 second clock. Each club has to take a shot within 30 seconds. And here's Paxson shooting and hitting. Dead eye. John Paxson, All American for the Irish, giving his team a seven point lead. Tremendous player. Paxson probably could have averaged 25 a game this year. He's averaging 17, but he's done the little things. He's dishing off, he'll run the fast break, he'll pass off inside. A very fine team player. Schultz and Aaron now. Rafael, Andre Good double team, but he hit. And another potential three-point play here. Oh, that's a Northwestern. big, big hoop, Dwayne. Northwestern really needed this basket. Andre Good getting his first hoop of the night. Watch him go up against Dolan, the freshman, and Kempton from behind. The foul was called against uh, Tim Kempton. Earlier, Northwestern made the three-point play. Now, 
Jack misses on the end of a potential three-point play. Notre Dame leading 24-19 with five minutes and 32 seconds to play until the half. A miss by Kepkin. And up comes Jenkins, and his idea is to draw Northwestern to within its closest uh, deficit in a long, long time. Jenkins driving the end line, puts it up and in. And Notre Dame again is guilty of the foul. This one is on Dolan. And Northwestern trails by three. Northwestern is attacking the basket offensively. This is what they had to do. They were shooting a lousy percentage from the perimeter, but Michael Jenkins has seemingly taken over this offense. Look at him go inside. That's where you draw free throws, ladies and gentlemen, not 25 feet from the hoop. Now Jenkins with the three-point play could bring the Cats within two. The seventh foul on Notre Dame, but the Tim Kempton picks up the foul. It was off the ball, and Notre Dame is over the limit, so Northwestern's going to go to the line, and Digger Phelps says, hey, they called it on us. Settle down. Had it been a player control foul, there would be no shot, but since, as Dick mentioned, it was off the ball, indeed, with the bonus penalty in effect, Andre Good is on the line, a one and one. And he misses the free throw. Northwestern, not a real good free throw shooting team. They're at 65% as a team. That's not good enough. Now, Notre Dame leading by three with 4.50 to play in the half. Uh, Aaron nearly with a great steal there from Paxton. Dolan getting it outside to Varner. Now, Paxton driving on Jenkins. And what do we have? Jenkins committing the foul on Paxton on the drive. And now both teams are in the bonus as Paxton will go to the line with one and one. Foul is on Michael uh, Jenkins. A good look at the Northwestern down. captain, the senior from Westinghouse High School in Chicago. Of course, the folks here in Chicago know Westinghouse, Frank Lolino's program, which produced, among others, the great Mark McGuire. So John Paxton. And the Northwestern fans behind the basket are helping him out. Puts a silencer to the fans with that shot. Jackson, a 73% free throw shooter on the season, and uh, you could tell he was going to be great. As a freshman, he had three free throws in the final seconds against UCLA to win the ball game. He makes them both and has 10 points to lead both teams. Notre Dame ahead 26 21. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Up comes Aaron splitting the defense. Oh, but he almost lost the ball, and then Schultz grabs it. Paul Schultz out of York High, uh, York High School in Elmhurst, Illinois. And now Jenkins in possession. Signals a Northwestern play. In the lane, Aaron double teamed. The ball is tipped. And it goes back out to Rafael. Great play there by Andre Good, who slapped that ball away from Notre Dame rebounders, enabling Northwestern to continue possession. Great play. Aaron finds the ball, but good defense by Sluby, and the Irish get it back. That's the second time Andre Good has made a game-saving play right there. Here's Jenkins. Now Aaron with Paxton on him. Aaron, the taller of the two. And again, the Wildcats have it, but Paxton down the floor for Notre Dame. There'll be no basket there. Rafael found Paxton, who will shoot two. Let's watch it again. Schultz tried to hold it in. Here's Paxton after Schultz flipped it out toward midcourt. Paxton going one-on-one -on -one against Gaddis Rathel. Rathel a little bigger than John, but no question on the call. Paxton's going to get a pair here. Shooting two. That is the first foul on Gaddis Rathel. Paxton, thoroughbred ball player. You don't give this fellow any opportunities or he'll kill you. He is an excellent college basketball player looking forward to a career in the NBA. Second free throw is in. Now Notre Dame leads 28-21. And we have a timeout on the floor with three minutes and 34 seconds to play until the half. We'll be back after this message.
line, I'll be talking with Ray Meyer, the coach of DePaul University at halftime live here at the Rosemont Horizon, so our viewers in Chicago and South Bend uh, can enjoy the coach. Good. as you see him grasp his right leg. Billy Varner missed the last couple of games for Notre Dame with a sprained ankle, and right now he is holding that right ankle. There was an apparent, uh, well, there was contact. It's just a matter of there was no foul called on the play. This is Jenkins into Varner, and they said out of bounds to Notre Dame, believe it or not. Now, it was on this play that either Varner uh, had his leg stepped on or twisted it but he is coming off a sprained ankle, and so Varner uh, may have to be substituted for here with uh, 3.31 to go in the half. Yes, uh, with Varner out, Tom Sluby at six feet four has been playing forward for Notre Dame. Now, the way they're helping Varner off, he might well be done for the night. Six points and three rebounds for Billy Varner, the senior from New Kensington, Pennsylvania. So, uh, as you point out, Sluby will have to go up front. Duff and Paxson will be the backcourt for the Irish. Uh, that call was kind of mystifying because there was all kinds of contact, and they awarded the ball out of bounds to Notre Dame. Yeah. Ryder is heading for the locker room, being uh, assisted by two fighting Irish players, and it does not look good. Notre Dame wound up the year 19 wins and nine losses, and a good hand for... Bill Varner from the Northwestern fans and the Notre Dame fans. So, Ruby to throw in, gets it to Paxson. So now it is Duff and Paxson in the backboard, as Dick mentioned. Ruby goes to a forward position. Dolan. Notre Dame leading 28 21. We're approaching three minutes left. Three minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half. Round one, National Invitation Tournament. Dolan working on staff. And is it an offensive foul? They yes, called it, Dolan. They called it on Dolan for hooking around Jim Stack, and that is three personal fouls on the freshman. Jim Dolan playing his first postseason game for Notre Dame. He's from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. The only player on the floor who has that who has had really substantial postseason experience for either team is Paxson. Two of the other Notre Damers were subs to the NCAA a couple of years ago, but saw very little time. Wildcats really need a hoop here just before halftime. And as the Bell tried to cut across, Paxson fouled him. And for Paxson, that's only his first foul. And Gaddis Raffel will go to the free throw line as the Wildcats have to establish something here at the free throw line, Dick. That's right. They've been a dismal failure here, one out of four. This is the type of situation where I think the clock hurts Notre Dame because you know Digger would be sitting on this seven-point lead right now, burn off the last 245 and go to the locker room with at least a seven- or eight-point lead. They can't do that in this tournament. Raffel makes his first free throw. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play until the half. This broadcast, a production of Century Sports in Chicago in conjunction with WFLD TV. As you see, Rafael make the second free throw. And we're also saying a big hello to our friends watching in South Bend on WNDU TV. Both of these teams have given their followers a lot of exciting moments in the 1982-83 basketball season. Trying to feed it in, and Rafael kicked it, giving Notre Dame possession. Digger feeling the pressure. He's letting it out a little bit. Digger Phelps enjoys coaching. Rich Falk, uh, in his first postseason game, I've been watching him over there on the sidelines, uh, Dwayne, and Rich seems very, very intense in this ball game. Uh, he really wants this one. You know that, because Northwestern has never made a postseason appearance. number 41 commits his third foul of the game and there again without the shot clock we've got that team at half court just passing the ball back and forth Notre Dame a little impatient with the 30 second clock and they put three offensive fouls inside on the big people so with the injury to Varner and we're
for the personal foul. Three of them on Kempton. We might see a bit of a shift of momentum back to Northwestern here. Very even good point. Though, even though Northwestern still trails by five. Andre Good cuts the Notre Dame lead to three. So, Notre Dame 28, Northwestern 25. A minute and 57 to play until the half. And Dick Gonski will be talking to Ray Meyer at halftime. This is Paxton. going bad, you go to your meat and potatoes, man, and that's your All-American Paxson. Such a smooth, excellent player. And now we have another turnover as the Wildcats turn it around as Rafael committed the foul. Good. Andre Good picks up his third, and that means Pitts or Aaron will come off to replace him. Andre sits down with three personal fouls and four points. All right. 25 for Northwestern, 30 for Notre Dame. A minute 37 to play until the half, and the Irish holding a five-point lead here at the Rosemont Horizon. Tim Andre earned the start with a big performance in the final game of the season against Northern Iowa. Andre had 20 points and a career-high 12 rebounds. Andre shooting number one. It is no good. And so he misses on the front end of the one and one. Art Aaron got the rebound off to Gaddis Rathel, and now Michael Jenkins brings it over the division line to the Northwestern front court. Aaron back to Jenkins. A minute 20 to play in the first half. Stack, the ball went off his knee, looked around and held it in. Over to Aaron, driving on Barlow. And Jenkins shooting as the time was running down. The Wildcats get it back with Bell missing. Aaron underneath, putting it up. No good. And a foul. It's Barlow committing the foul. Ken Barlow, freshman from Indianapolis, fouling. And Art Aaron will go to the free throw line. All right, we've got an interesting interpretation of the 30-second clock as you see the shot there. The clock had run down, and the first shot missed everything. In the NBA, the clock would continue. In the NIT, the 30-second shot clock is reset on any shot attempt, whether or not it hits the rim. Aaron missing the first free throw, and if Northwestern loses this one, they might be able to trace it right to their free throw shooting in the first half. Second free throw by Aaron is in. And the Wildcats now are four out of eight in shooting free throws. So they, they've blown a potential eight points on the free throw line here in the first half. Notre Dame's lead is four with under a minute to play in the first half. Paxson, no. But right into Barlow's hands. We have a jump ball situation. Rafael and Barlow. Now we have the alternating possession rule. And they say it's Notre Dame's turn. For those of you who might not be watching college basketball during the season, they, they don't throw it up anymore other than the start of the game. They alternate possession on every jump ball situation. And it is Northwestern's and Notre Dame's turn. The ball goes out of bounds again, and Notre Dame will have it again. Sluby on the throw in. And out Duff, 45 seconds left in the first half. Duff motioning Barlow through the pack. And he almost lost it, and Jenkins fouls up in the midcourt. The third foul on Michael Jenkins. That is not a good foul, and Rich Falk is going to let Jenkins know about it. He's going to call on Richardson to replace Jenkins for the rest of the half, which is only 37 seconds. Rich Falk did not want Michael Jenkins out near midcourt committing a foul like that against Duff, who can't, who really is not an offensive threat from the floor. The line, from the free throw line, it's another story. Duff is 20 out of 23 on the season. 87% shooter, and he makes the free throw here. As Notre Dame, leading for most of the first half after Northwestern led in the early couple of minutes. Notre Dame now leading 31 to 26. And here is young Mr. Duff. Dan Duff out of Lincoln, Illinois. It's in. 35 seconds to play in the first half. Northwestern trailing Notre Dame 32 to 26. Clarence Richardson, Northwestern sophomore with the ball, making his first appearance in the game. Over to Rafael, now to Aaron. Aaron back to Richardson, working to the right. Richardson out of Los Angeles. Into Stack, a short shot by Jim Stack is in. 
And now Northwestern trails Notre Dame by four with eight seconds, seven, six, five, four. Long shot by Paxton, no good. A desperation heat by Schultz is short. And Notre Dame and an entertaining first half of basketball here in round one of the National Invitational Tournament. Notre Dame is leading Northwestern at halftime, 32 to 28. Dick Gonski will have Ray Meyer as his halftime guest, and we'll review the first half after this message. by two points to Purdue, 55-53. Robert Morris. Robert Morris and uh, James Madison upset West Virginia, 57-50. All right, again. Barner, who is back in the game, after being carried off earlier, gives Notre Dame a six-point lead at 34-28. He looked as if he might be out for a month. They carried him off, and it did not look good at all. I hope he's uh, playing and can feel whatever pain is there. Well, he's moving around. Back to Jenkins in the stack. Stack battling, shooting, and hitting. And no question star. Well, Dwayne, he really earned that two points because he was sandwiched by the Notre Dame defense. Irish, a big physical team, as is their tradition. Paxson on a leading shot. No good. One of the few shots he's missed tonight. And the rebound to Andre Good over to Michael Jenkins. Northwestern now, really has to rebound in this second half. That's been one of their problems tonight. On the right, Rafael. Back out to Jenkins. 34 to 30, Northwestern. Jenkins underneath. Stripped to the ball and fouled. And it would be Ruby with a personal foul for Notre Dame. So it'll be Northwestern's ball. Wait a minute. They call it a shooting foul. So it'll be on the free throw line for Jenkins shooting two. You saw Rich Falk talking to Art Aaron. Art Aaron in the first half shot one out of six from the floor. Rich is trying to get Art Aaron established in this Northwestern offense. He's having a heck of a time against this Notre Dame defense. Free throw by Jenkins is good, and Notre Dame's lead is down to three. Aaron in the first half had three points. Stack led North Northwestern with eight. Paxson led the game, 14 for Notre Dame. On the line, Jenkins for number two. And he misses it. Paxson with the ball. Northwestern has not been able to get any closer than three points since the early stages of the game. Now Notre Dame using Paxson on a wing and bringing out Dolan and Sluby to run the offense from the point. Sluby looking for Kempton back to Dolan. Over goes on the right to Paxson and away from the ball. We have a three-second violation call. Three-second violation call on Notre Dame. Notre Dame extending their defense as you look at Digger Phelps. The Irish in a rather uh, oh, lazy press just enough to keep Northwestern occupied in the early moments of the possession. That's the seventh time Notre Dame has thrown the ball away, but Northwestern has thrown the ball away 11 times as Andre Good hits. And now it's a one-point game. Notre Dame 34, Northwestern 33, and lots of time to go early in the second half. And they're waving the purple on the far side of the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Northwestern on a four-on-one, and we have a, a stoppage of play at the midcourt. It's a foul on Tom Sluby. So, as it turns out, it's an intelligent foul by Notre Dame because Northwestern on a four-on-one. That's what Rich Falk was yelling about. You could see him in the, the shot we saw of first Digger Phelps and then Richie Falk. Both of them working on both their team and the officials. 34 to 33 in favor of the Irish. 
And now Northwestern has a chance to regain the lead for the first time since the early minutes of the game. Hempton is out of the lineup. Barlow is in. Stack shooting. It goes, but it will not count. Let's watch the official. The foul is on Barnard. And Dwayne, the foul was off the ball. Barner was trying to cover uh, Jimmy Stack in the middle there. So Northwestern taking advantage of Barner, thinking that maybe that leg is still bothering him a little bit. So Digger, uh, you know, has a decision to make on Barner before much longer. 34 to 33, Notre Dame by one. And if Northwestern can score here, the fans of the Wildcats will break down the house. You can be sure of that. Now in the NIT, you have to shoot the ball within 30 seconds. If you don't, the other team gets it. So that's the first 30-second shot clock violation we've had. And that's amazing because uh, neither one of these teams played with a shot clock all year long. Oh, that could be disaster. That's the fourth, Good. fourth foul on Andre Good. Rich Falk, very upset. Paul Schultz is ready to come back in as they look at Willie the Wildcat, the Northwestern mascot. And now Good sitting down. You see Paul Schultz. There he is from York High School in Elmhurst, Illinois. Northwestern junior. This is John Paxson. Out to Dolan. He had two early baskets. He kept Notre Dame with a striking distance. And Barner, who spent the end of the first half in the locker room injured, and Barlow hit it. Notre Dame now leads by three, 36-33. As that last Northwestern apparent basket was disallowed because they didn't get the shot away in 30 seconds. Oh, still hitting the deck. And there's no foul called. Notre Dame brings it up for the three-point lead. Boy, Dolan just leveled Schultz. No call at all underneath. Paxson and shooting Barner. No good. Rebound by Schultz. And he gets it over to Rathel. What a great spectator game here. We hope you're enjoying it. In Chicago and in Northwest Indiana tonight. Aaron shooting. No good. He's been off. Dolan and Schultz battling. Dolan held it into Paxson. And Dolan wound up over the press table. And that extra effort enabling Notre Dame to get the ball. Coming up to 15 minutes left in the game. Exactly 15 minutes left in the game. Dolan with it. And Barner getting position and hitting. Nice pass by Tom Sluby that set up Barner along the baseline. Hart Aaron one out of seven from the floor, and that's been a big, big problem for the Wildcats here tonight, establishing Art Aaron in this offense. Northwestern's largest, Notre Dame's largest lead has been eight. The Irish lead now by five. Back from outside over to Aaron, and he misses this one, so it's one for eight. But Schultz got it back for the Wildcats, Dr. Jenkins. Now with a 30-second clock, unlike many Big Ten games, one team leading by 10 won't mean much down the stretch. As Jenkins, getting position, scores on the little pop from the left of the hoop. Notre Dame's lead is 38-35. Northwestern pressure as the Irish finally get it up. We'll be with it, a noisy arena here in Chicago tonight at the Rosemont Horizon. And underneath, Barlow, hitting. What a pass by Dolan. Barlow's got in traffic. Jim Stack had his hand right in the face, and he still got it up. Rathel loops it ahead to Aaron. Notre Dame with that familiar lead of five points. Aaron shooting, and he hits. the Northwestern inability to establish the offense. A steal by Jenkins. And Northwestern now trails by one. Listen to this crowd in Chicago. Jenkins is now the leading scorer 
four. Northwestern with a dozen. Nolan leading in. Offensive foul on Notre Dame. Nolan commits his fourth and with a score. Notre Dame 40, Northwestern 39. We'll be back after this message. In the second half, Northwestern five of seven from the floor. That's a big improvement under 44% shooting in the first half. Notre Dame is four out of seven. And the fouls, there you see a fan who likes us all. Andre Good and Dolan each have four personal fouls. That's more serious for Northwestern because Andre Good is their starting center. 40 to 39 in favor of Notre Dame. Ball Schultz with the ball for Northwestern gives to Jenkins. Jenkins on the right of your screen with the ball has had an excellent season for Northwestern. An excellent senior year for this young man. Aaron, and Art Aaron gives Northwestern its first lead since the early moments of the game. Since 15.35 to play in the first half, that's the last lead for Northwestern, and they've done it getting Aaron into the offense. But here's Barner feeding Kempton, who takes Aaron and scores. And so Kempton has given Notre Dame Northwestern leading 43-42. Aaron carries a very high profile. Here's a steal, and we have a foul on Kempton, and that is four fouls on the Irish center. And these Northwestern fans are as vocal and as enthusiastic as maybe they have ever been in the history of basketball at Northwestern University right now. Northwestern leading by a point midway through the second half. We'll be back after this. Tremendous turnaround here in the second half. Maybe the quickest turnaround since Jane Byrne. I don't know. Northwestern seven out of nine in the second half. That's 78 percent. They have hit their last five shots from the floor. Jenkins two, Aaron three. Chicago is rocking with college basketball excitement tonight. Northwestern with a one-point lead in the ball. Schultz playing quite a bit because of good lead in foul trouble. And Schultz on a magnificent block. Coming through to make the block for Notre Dame was Sluby. There he is. He got off the floor, no question about it, but they called the foul on Sluby, and so Paul Schultz who has really struggled at the line this year, will go for the two free throws. Schultz, 16 out of 40. At one point, he was four out of 23. And Schultz takes the first free throw. Schultz's free throw shooting on Northwestern's final Big Ten road trip improved dramatically. He started bending his knees a little bit and started, uh, apparently, according to Rich Falk, using a little bit different technique. Well, Dwayne, since that 4 out of 23, he's 13 out of 18, and that's good shooting. Northwestern matching his largest lead as second free throw so good, but Stack put it in, and now Northwestern has its largest lead of the game at four points. So Schultz making one for two, putting it back up and in, and Northwestern doing everything right. And a full court press for the Wildcats. Notre Dame just beat the 10 seconds also. They just made it. Northwestern looked rattled early, and now Notre Dame looking rattled. And the Cats have made a comeback with Andre Good sitting on the bench with four fouls. Out of bounds off Rafael on the pass by Duff, intended for Paxson. And so from the forecourt, Notre Dame will have possession. Notre Dame would like to stem the Northwestern Tide right here. The Irish, 19 wins and nine losses during the season. Northwestern's best year in many, many years. 16 wins and 12 losses. The ball goes into the backcourt. Duff picks it up, but it went off for Phil. So there's no over and back violation. And now, action, leading away. No good, he took a bad shot there. And now we have a foul. Let's watch and see. It's on Notre Dame. Billy Varner. There you 
see the Wildcat Partisan. And now you look at Billy Varner. Varner coming back very courageously from that first half injury to the ankle. Digger Phelps wants the next call. Team fouls in the second half. Notre Dame 7 to 1 against Northwestern here. And so that's a story. You have the bonus from the next foul on for Northwestern. They are really in good shape right now. And things are looking rosy as Northwestern tries to jump out to it to a five-point lead. Jenkins getting number one. And Jenkins leading his own cheers after that free throw. This is a Northwestern team. Not many of these players felt they're going to get a tournament a bit, Dick. And once you get a taste of it, Dwayne, you love it. You want more. I know I do. <laughs> Indeed. Second free throw by Jenkins is good. And it's Northwestern leading Notre Dame 48-42. And so the Irish now in trouble. Paxton with it. Lots of time to go. And remember, a 30-second clock. No team can freeze down the stretch. However, with four minutes to play, we'll get rid of that 30-second clock. And now it appears that Schultz committed a Northwestern foul against Varner. No trouble. That's only Schultz's first, and he's doing a very fine job of just clogging up the middle in that zone defense while Andre Good sits with four personal fouls. This young man you're looking at, Schultz, did a very fine job while he's been in there to uh, keep Northwestern in the ballgame. Second team foul of the second half for Northwestern. And alley you And it worked as Barlow put it in, assisted by Dow. Barlow is scoring. Kenny Barlow out of Indianapolis. A little showtime. They really looked good. They worked it very well. 48 to 44, Northwestern by four. Aaron, no good. Tip. No, again. And it was Schultz. Giving Northwestern a lead of six, 50 to 44. Paul Schultz, who averaged only two and a half points a game, already has five. The first half belonged to Notre Dame. And at least the first 10 minutes of the second half belonged to Northwestern as Paxson drives and he jumps to the deck, missed the shot, and we have a foul on Schultz. Well, the Irish went to their meal ticket. As you look at Digger Phelps calling out what he wants the next time down the floor, John Paxson, who had 14 points in the first half, has been scoreless in the second half for the first 10 minutes and two seconds. This broadcast is a production of Century Sports in Chicago. Paxson missing the first one. Century Sports has produced Northwestern basketball and football on television and radio in Chicago the past couple of years. Also has produced Boston University Athletics and will and happy to be a part of Notre Dame's program and the NIT tonight as Paxton hits on the second free throw. Now Northwestern with a five point lead and Duff on Jenkins in the Northwestern backcourt with Bell guarded by Varner. And who would have thought when Varner was helped off the floor to the locker room late in the first half that he'd he be back in there looking so physically capable here. Aaron gets it outside to Jenkins toward the right sideline. Jenkins driving a tenacious Notre Dame defense. Notre Dame only gave up 55 points a game in the regular season. Wildcats fighting to keep possession. Aaron having trouble. Too far underneath and Dolan got it. Aaron let himself get out of control. He was too worried about the 30-second shot clock. The noise in this building is deafening, Glenn. Duff giving a pack to the Dolan, bumps in the stack, and we have a traveling violation. After stack at the floor, Notre Dame was called for traveling. And we're going to have a timeout. Oh, I've got to stay with us. I don't even have to urge you to stay up for this one. What a game. Northwestern 50. Notre Dame 45. We're going to keep it here, Dickonski. Nine minutes and eight seconds left in the game. Many people were talking about this as an ideal matchup between these close geographical rivals. We're going to take another look at that door the Notre Dame Ali Oop Oop. There it is. That's Barlow coming into your picture. Perfectly timed play. And he didn't hang on the rim. I thought he might have uh, curled his fingers around, but it's all right if he is protecting himself. Look at the color and pageantry of college basketball here at the horizon. Northwestern representing the Big Ten. Notre Dame, a big independent. Notre Dame, uh, of course, wanted to get to the NCAA. Northwestern is glad to be here. Interesting, last night, three independents won in the NIT. It was a very good night for the independents. 
New Orleans and DePaul and South Carolina were winners. And uh, you've got a kind of conference versus independence situation going now when you talk about bids. The state of Louisiana, Dick, has to be rocky. After traditional basketball power, Louisiana State was beaten by upstart University of New Orleans. Absolutely right, and uh, it sure is going to help some recruiting down, down south there in the Bayou country. Taking a look at second half scoring, John Paxson with one point. You saw that free throw just a few seconds ago. That's been one factor in Notre Dame's fade here offensively in the second half. This guy looks like he's going to have one heck of a St. Patty's Day. <laughs> so Paxson with 15 points on the night, but only one of those, as Dick points out, in the second half. Nine minutes and eight seconds to play in the game. Northwestern 50, Notre Dame 45. Uh, our television plans for the future, be watching the newspapers, be watching TV Guide, be watching, uh, be listening to radio and television. For further information on the rest of the television plans for the rest of the NIT, for sure, WFLD-TV in Chicago will carry the semifinals and the finals out of New York. But there'll be other games also involving Notre Dame, DePaul, and Northwestern on Chicago television. Back. Giving Northwestern a seven-point lead at 52 to 45. Jim Stack in his senior season with the Wildcats. Now Notre Dame clearly in trouble. Duff giving it out to Dolan. And Barner double teamed by Stack and Jenkins as Northwestern's co-captains are on him. Duff faking. And Dolan passing further underneath. Getting up for a block, and apparently Schultz committed a foul as the block apparently was made cleanly by Aaron. I believe they called a foul on Schultz. Yes. And not on Stack, as you see Stack going up straight and then Aaron making the uh, rejection. But the foul was on Paul Schultz, who's played very well tonight. He has three fouls. I'm sure this is something Digger did not want to get into, having his team try to play catch-up basketball. They haven't had to do it most of the year. They've been sitting on leads without a shot clock. Now there are, what, seven points down with eight minutes to play. This is something Notre Dame didn't want. And Notre Dame's free throw shooting tailing off here in the second half. 0 for 2 there. Northwestern and got out to a nine-point lead as the ball is knocked out of bounds and it's midcourt as you see coach Digger Phelps of Notre Dame and coach Rich Falk of Northwestern. John Hogan, president of Century Sports, who put the Chicago NIT television package with us at our store's location. And a noisy Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Jenkins with the ball. Northwestern 52, Notre Dame 45, eight minutes and eight seconds to play in the game. Alley oops to Schultz, who comes down and puts a knee into Dolan, and then flings it back outside to Jenkins. Jenkins working on Duff. Stack trying to fight free. Schultz a leading shot, no good. Schultz got it back, and Aaron picking it up, and just as everything went right for Notre Dame in the first half, everything is going right for Northwestern now. With a newly shaven head, is red hot for Northwestern. This fellow may have the highest profile of any basketball player in the entire Midwest. He's either very, very good or very, very not so good. Boy, Northwestern had to get Art Aaron established in this offense. He had three points at the half. He now has 11. And the Cats are on a roll. season victory was by near landslide proportion over Minnesota at Alumni Hall in Chicago earlier. Wildcats are playing very well though right now. Here right. is Notre Dame on a steal. I think Paxson got away with a reaching in foul or reaching over the top. No call there. Duff getting room and hitting as the ball crawls over the rim and Notre Dame comes up to within seven. Northwestern leading 54 to 47. Coming up to six and a half minutes left in the game. And you can see Notre Dame getting a little more frantic in their offense. They're rushing to the hoop. They know they're down by seven now. And if they're not careful, they could be down double figures real quickly. A three-point play would do it. Paul Schultz at a turning shot. Good. And Paul Schultz, the unsung hero. He was fouled. And will go to the line as Northwestern regains its nine-point lead. Could be the three-point play I refer
refer to Paul Schultz, who has been magnificent. Barlow picks up the foul, and that's his second personal foul. Schultz now with seven points on the night, and you can't say enough about the contribution Schultz has made with Andre Good on the bench for almost 10 minutes of this half. Exactly. You saw the pained expression on Barlow's face as he sat down. And now making his first appearance in the second half, Joe Price, number 40. As we look at the young man from the west suburbs of Chicago, Schultz hitting his free throw. And Northwestern is out to a 10-point lead, the largest lead that either team has had tonight. With six minutes and 19 seconds left in the game, we'll be back after this message. Western is not a fluke, ladies and gentlemen. In the Big Ten this year, they had wins over Minnesota, Ohio State, Illinois, Purdue, and Michigan State, all teams in postseason tournaments. In the second half, Northwestern is 12 out of 18 at the floor. Notre Dame, 7 out of 12. And the Northwestern Wildcats have out-rebounded Notre Dame, 11 to 4. With Northwestern leading 57 to 47 at Notre Dame ball. We'll have a shot clock for another two minutes and ten seconds. And then, with four minutes to play in the game, the shot clock will no longer be enforced. This by Price, rebound by Lavelle, and there's going to be a lot of horse fans on both sides, and maybe especially Northwestern fans tomorrow in Chicago. Under six minutes to play. Rattel and it was off the ball. There's Coach Rich Falk. He is sending Art Aaron back into the ball game. Aaron has caught fire here in the second half with 11. He replaces Gaddis Rattel. And there you see a very worried Digger Phelps. But remember, Notre Dame was down by nine to DePaul in this building and tied it in the last minute and a half. Ruby, a short shot, which is no good. The rebound. Jenkins and Dolan. And Jenkins won the battle. Price and Dolan handled in. And he's trying to get it away and does to Aaron. Great job by Jenkins to get that ball out. A, desper a desperation move by Kempton as he bangs into good. And the big freshman is fouled out. And a picture is worth all the words you can say at this point. Well, there's the freshman from Bayville, New York, 6'9", 225. And uh, he's probably learning a lot of basketball in the last uh, 29 ball games or so. He goes to the bench with five personal fouls. He's got three years left at Notre Dame, and uh, he should be one of Diggler's bigger stalwarts in the years to come. Not so for John Paxson. John Paxson, a senior out of Kettering, Ohio, and uh, if things don't turn around real quickly here, Paxson may be playing his last game in a Notre Dame uniform wearing his brother's number, number four. Well, this Northwestern team seemingly can beat anybody here in Chicago. They have gotten better as this game has gone along. Jim. Northwestern, as Good makes his first free throw, the only two Northwestern losses in Chicago were to Iowa and Indiana. And both of those teams played very, very well to beat Northwestern in hard-fought games here in Chicago at Alumni Hall on the campus of DePaul. As Good making them both, giving Northwestern a 12-point lead. This is Paxson, and Notre Dame has to score in a hurry. They only have the benefit of the shot clock now for another minute and 15 seconds. Paxson shooting, no good. Tip, no good. Rebound, Schultz. And if you're to point at a hero, I think it has to be number 23, Paul Schultz. Since he has come in in relief, Northwestern has really put it to Notre Dame. John Paxson has not scored a field goal in the second half of this game. for the ball. Getting it up to Paxson. And Paxson moves into uh, Jenkins and Paxson's call for the foul. Oh no, traveling call. They say traveling. 
This was John Paxson one on one going against Jenkins and it looked like he just let his feet slip out from under him. He may have hit a wet spot on the floor there and uh, Paxson lost control out of bounds. Up comes Aaron. Four minutes and 27 seconds left in the game. Aaron missing. Ball on the floor. Aaron got it back. Aaron tries to put it up and he's following the act of shooting by Barlow. Now, good Northwestern win. We have pretty good indication out of New York and we don't want to say for sure because in the NIT, as Ray Meyer said, nothing's for sure. They have to decide among themselves tomorrow what the matchups will be. But there is a good indication that it would be DePaul versus Northwestern next. In the horizon. That's the way it looks right now. As Aaron makes the first free throw. Again, we're not going to make an official announcement. That'll come out tomorrow. But our producers at Century Sports are pretty close to the entire situation. And they say the odds heavily favor a Northwestern DePaul matchup on Monday night here. And so it's down Northwestern by 14. Now Aaron's got 10 points and eight rebounds in the second half alone. Barter hitting. But Notre Dame still trails by a double figure count. Northwestern leading 61 to 49. And in just three more seconds, there'll be no more clock. Now, there's no more 30 second clock. In the last four minutes of a national invitation tournament game, the 30 second clock disappeared. And you see the coaching staff making the team aware of that, saying, get the ball out, get it out, and hold on to it, burn the rest of this game away. Aaron giving it over to Jenkins. And now the Wildcats have everything in their favor. Jenkins double teamed, and we have a foul. Is it on Paxson? Yes, yes, that's his second. Well, Dwayne, I can't imagine a crowd any louder than we've had tonight, but can you imagine DePaul and Northwestern in this building Monday night? It could be one of the great college basketball matchups of recent years, Dick. For and Chicago I, or anywhere else for that matter, huh? Uh, the NIT, very show business oriented, as you and I know. They have to be drooling as they thought of that. And that's what it appears to be now. As Jenkins makes the free throw, giving him 15 points. What a game for the senior. Michael Jenkins has the disconsolate look on the faces of the Notre Dame cheerleaders tells the Notre Dame story. Well, the cheer is out of the leaders right now. It's been a very fine year for the Irish. And they've got a very young club coming back. Well, it's not over yet. Three minutes and 33 seconds to play in the game. Northwestern leading by 14. Notre Dame led by four at the half. And Paxton hits and immediately calls time. And here we go. This is Digger Phelps at his very, very best. We'll see this the rest of the ball game. Northwestern leading by 12 with three minutes and 26 seconds left in the game. We'll be right back after this. And there you see the crowd, everybody happy on the Northwestern side. Uh, I want to say hello, Pat and Dennis Ballard are here and a group from St. Jude out in South Holland. I want to say hello to all of them. Second half scoring, Northwestern. 35 to 19 over the Irish. That is unbelievable when you consider the Irish scored 32 points in the first half and had a four point lead. But you know the Notre Dame tradition in football and in basketball, Amen. you never count them out. Boy, that's and there are five Notre Damers in the backcourt as now Northwestern tracks the Notre Dame press. And Notre Dame playing a tenacious, almost vicious defense right now. line and left it to play a control foul. Now, Dwayne, this game is going to resemble the Notre Dame-DePaul game from here on in. DePaul had about an eight-point lead with about a minute and a half to play, and Digger fouled. Then he called timeout. The key was that DePaul missed the front end of the one-on-one -on -one free throws down through that last minute and a half, and Notre Dame caught him. Let's see if the free throw shooting can extend the Northwestern lead. A great air of celebration here at the Rosemont Horizon. Northwestern fans are celebrating on that miss by the South. Notre Dame still alive now. Three minutes to go in the game. Northwestern leading 63 to 51. Broken up by Aaron. Knocked out of bounds. And Notre Dame ball, Barner to throw in. As we look at Art Aaron and his newly shaven head. He did it after the regular season. No one really knows why. But I'm sure he'll keep it shaven if Notre Dame Northwestern. Northwestern lead is down to 10 with two minutes. 
minutes and 40 seconds to play in the game. A frantic Notre Dame defense. But Aaron on the stop for Northwestern. Art Aaron, the second half hero, or one of them. Northwestern by 12. Under two and a half minutes. And here's Stack to tied up with Marlow. Foul will go against Jim Stack of Northwestern. And uh, the Irish are going to platoon their guards now. Here's Art Aaron on the stuff. Notre Dame's got a foul up court. They can't let them break the press and get past half court because there's nobody back. Art Aaron in for the easy slam. I'm in. I'm in. Well, you have to hand it to the Irish. This is a great defense, a full court pressure tactic that they put on here to try to get back into this game. Duff getting it back outside to Paxson. Northwestern leading by 12. Two minutes and 19 seconds left in the game. Barner shooting. It's good. Notre Dame fighting like an alley cat now. 65 to 55. Aaron with it for Northwestern. Back out to Rafael. Duff to foul. And not many seconds have elapsed. And now the guards are platooned with Dolan and Price coming on. Duff and Buchanan going out. Buchanan and Duff have the fouls to take, and they're also quicker than Dolan and Price. And so Digger is really utilizing the talents of his players to their utmost. Rathel on the line. Northwestern senior out of St. Ignatius High School in the Chicago Catholic League, and he missed again. So that's a potential four points and on two Rathel misses. And Dwayne, that's what DePaul did the other day. Ten point Northwestern lead. Down out of the corner, no good this time by Paxton. Rafael got the rebound and dribbles it up to Jenkins. Notre Dame's got a foul. Aaron was loose, but Jenkins couldn't hit it. Now Aaron gets it off the good. Double team. Jenkins at midcourt. And it's a keepaway game now. They've got a foul. Back to Aaron. And Aaron is fouled. Dolan committed the foul. That's his fifth foul. And Dolan is out of the game. So Kepton. Dolan has fouled out for Notre Dame. And we have a minute and 33 left in the game. Northwestern going to the free throw line with a 10-point lead. The man in the sweater in the middle of your picture you just saw, not this man, but the previous one, was Frank Lolino, the coach at Westinghouse who produced Michael Jenkins and Mark Aguirre and many, many others. Eddie Johnson now in the, the pros with Kansas City, a former University of Illinois star. He has to be very proud of Jenkins tonight. Aaron missing the free throw, and the misses are keeping Notre Dame in it. And here now we have Rafael guilty of a foul. So with a minute 32 to play, with Northwestern in, uh, inability at the free throw line, Notre Dame could creep back to within eight right here. Dwayne, it's really interesting, the pattern and the mirror effect of this game and that DePaul game. DePaul missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Notre Dame came down, hit the shots, and got back in it. In this game, the Cats are missing the front end of the one-on-one, -on -one, but Notre Dame has not capitalized once they got the ball back. Free throw is up, and it's no good! Duff missed a critical free throw, a minute and a half to play in the game. Stack gets it up to Aaron. No good. Stack on the foul! That might be it! inside the end line. Northwestern not interested in shooting, just interested in working the clock. Leading by 12 with under a minute to play in the game. Jenkins to Andre Good. Coach Rich Falk on his feet. You see him on the far side. And here now is Buchanan committing the foul. And it's going to be an intentional foul. Two-shot foul. Bigger calls timeout. 54 seconds left. Northwestern by 12. Rich Falk has seen his squad outscore the Fighting Irish by 16 here in the second half. And there you see the sea of purple as the Wildcat Rooters are out on mass, and they are likely to be out on mass next week if 
Northwestern and DePaul were to be scheduled here in the horizon. What an attraction for the Chicago area. According to John Hogan, the president of our company, Century Sports, uh, which uh, is presenting this game on WFLD-TV in Chicago and WNDU-TV in South Bend, it's a 90% chance, Dick, <laughs> that it will be DePaul versus Northwestern here at the Rosemont Horizon Monday night. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be here, if indeed that is the matchup, and the announcement will be made tomorrow morning, the tickets would be on sale at Dyke Stadium tomorrow, also at DePaul University tomorrow, and at all ticket drive locations. So we suggest that you listen to the radio tomorrow, you watch TV, maybe the newspapers will have late word for the morning edition, but it looks to be Northwestern and DePaul next. Should Northwestern go on to win this one, and they're leading 67 to 55 with 54 seconds to play in the game. Dwayne, we've seen uh, Digger Phelps do marvelous jobs before with uh, working the clock, milking it, and bringing his Irish back. The task right now is almost insurmountable because that man, Rich Falk, has his Wildcats playing as well as they have played throughout the Big Ten season. There's no question about that as Andre Good hits the free throw. That's another thing. Northwestern has finally begun to make free throws. Jenkins is five out of six in this half, and Good is three out of three. Northwestern in its first postseason tournament game ever on the verge of its first postseason victory ever. 14 point lead, 69 to 55. Paxton, great player, missing. Ball in the possession of nobody, and Dolan got it back. Notre Dame in possession with Barlow getting the ball back. Ramble scramble action. Marty Clary is in the game for Northwestern. 34 and white. Down to Jenkins. Underneath Aaron hitting. No good. And a foul on Barlow. Aaron will go to the line. Well, the outside official, Ed Batikowski, said he got the shot on the way up, so there's no goaltending. But it will be a two-shot foul for the young junior, Art Aaron, out of St. Ignatius of Chicago who averaged 14.4 a game on the regular season for Northwestern. He has 15 tonight, a dozen of those here in the second half. Art Aaron making the free throw. Aaron carried Northwestern to a great month of December when Northwestern won its first nine games and went into the Big Ten with a record of nine and one. Second free throw is good. Northwestern has won this game in decisive fashion. Dick. 71 to 55 is the score now. Barner shooting and hitting. 71 to 57. Notre Dame calling time, but it's too late for the Irish. Northwestern with 18 seconds left, leading Notre Dame 71 to 57. We'll keep it here. And Dick and I will be wrapping things up very briefly because we have to get into the other Channel 32 programming. MASH followed by uh, the Benny Hill Show. And again, we invite you to stay tuned and we'll get further television details on the NIT as the days go by, either tomorrow or the next day. Aaron down the floor, threw it into the hands of Barlow who carried it out of bounds. Northwestern ball with 15 seconds left in the game. Well, now Ridge Falk is pulling Jim Stack, his great senior leader, to a standing ovation from the Northwestern fans. A very fine move by Rich Falk because this senior from St. Lawrence of Oak Forest in the Catholic League here in Chicago has been tremendous for Northwestern, the second leading scorer all time here for the Cats. Only Billy McKinney has scored more points in his career than Jim Stack. Stack hugging Michael Jenkins, now Andre Good. Northwestern on its way to the second round of the NIT. Northwestern on the verge of its first win over Notre Dame in 22 years. And John Peterson missing. And Clary shooting, and he misses. Peterson on the tip, no good. One second left in the game, and it's over. Northwestern, 71. Notre Dame, 57. The coaches shake hands. Northwestern in its first postseason tournament game. As you look at the Northwestern fans, Northwestern a win. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with our wrap up after this message.
Northwestern has defeated Notre Dame in round one of the National Invitation, 71 to 57. Quickly, here's the scoring for Northwestern, a balanced offense. Art Aaron with a big second half at 17. Michael Jenkins, 16. Jim Stack, 16. Andre Good, 10. Notre Dame had two players in double figures. Barner, despite going out late in the first half, wound up the high score in the game with 18. And Paxson, Dagonski, 17. 14-point win. Unbelievable. Tremendous second half by Art Aaron, who scored just three in the first half. He finished with 17. He was outstanding. When he got into the offense for Northwestern, things really started to click. And they really, uh, in the second half, buried uh, Notre Dame. They won the game by 14. They outscored them by 18 in the second half. Speculation now in Chicago, the possibility of a Northwestern-DePaul second-round matchup here at the Horizon on Monday night in the second round of the NIT. And uh, that would be Ray Meyer, the coach, against the upstart.